what happened at the New Orleans. So Dr. Sean Jinwright loves Beyonce and he loves cornbread and sweet tea. Beyonce's lyrics from his blog, he says, Beyonce's lyrics embrace a radical love ethic that celebrates an unapologetic love for all things black. This radical love ethic means loving the jet blue, black, gay, trans, queer, straight, thug in heels. That we're all black and that's what matters. In this video of formation, Beyonce intermixes sentiments about being powerful with photos of Katrina and police barricades. Jinrite argues that hip-hop culture is a style that calls attention to the problems urban youth face on a daily basis through music, dress, and language, and allows them to see the potential of social transformation. Dr. Jinrite is a leading national expert on African American youth, youth activism, specifically black youth activism, and youth development. He currently is Associate Professor of Education and Afrocentric Studies. He's also a Senior Research Associate for the Cesar Chavez Institute for Public Policy at San Francisco State University. He founded Leadership Excellence, which is currently called Flourish Agenda, as an innovative youth development agency, which is located in Oakland. And it allows youth um, to learn leadership skills that work towards healing. He also recently created a smartphone app called Vibosity that is being used in California schools to allow teachers to understand the emotional climate of their classroom because he recognizes that health and emotional health is intimately linked to academic achievement. He currently has three published works and one um, which in which he served as co-editor um, with Julio Camarota and Pedro Noguera. Sorry if I butchered those names. In 2015, he wrote Hope and Healing. In 2009, he wrote Black Youth Rising. In 2004, he wrote Black in School, which is a commentary on one effort in Afrocentric school reform. In Jen Wright's earlier works, he criticizes the problem or the risk or possibility frameworks, positive youth development, for example, that have been applied to, the, to Black youth and argues for a new paradigm, one that recognizes and addresses the structural inequalities the ways that our government has condemned black youth to a life of containment, and how black youth can engage in activism to achieve critical consciousness. In Jim Wright's later works, he celebrates how activism has created hope, healing, justice, and a love within that community, a renewed sense to, and which has renewed his sense of commitment to activism. So today I'll share with you a couple of his projects and his scholarly contributions. Um, to highlight this professional arc. The first paper I'd like to share with you is his paper called um, New Terrain in Youth Development, The Promise of a Social Justice Approach, in which um, Dr. Jen Wright and uh, Taj James write about the a new framework for youth engagement. In this paper he states, both models Problem prevention and positive youth development obscure our understanding of urban youth of color more than they explain because they assume that youth themselves should be changed rather than their oppressive environments. And that we should promote praxis rather than just community service for young people because young people can address real problems, not just working to make the community a, a more beautiful place through cleanup projects. And that this will allow them to exercise power to. Um, to address the structural inequalities of their lives. Another project that I'd like to highlight is um, some work that he did in 2009 to 2007 in which he created a collective on youth activism and this was out of the Cesar Chavez Center at San Francisco State and it chronicles his work in um, a chapter in Rev revolutionizing education which was about youth participatory action research in motion where six youth par, um, youth adult par teams uh, found 
and created their product, which was called the Youth Bill of Rights, which recognized that we need to move away from fear-based policies into future-based policies for youth. We need to broaden accountability in schools from a single accountability or, or one-sided accountability where students and, and teachers are the, the cause of problems in schools to look at the broader system and to um, expand educational resources because they felt like they were currently inequitable. There was an inequitable distribution of resources. Based on my research, I wasn't able to tell whether this organization was still in existence. Um, and it's something that I find super interesting, so I will be following up on that. The final work that I want to highlight is an article that was um, recently released called Radically Healing Black Lives, A Love Note to Justice. And in this piece, Jin Rai talks about the Black Lives Matter movement and how it really offers an opportunity for some healing around uh, racial injustice, homophobia, sexism, etc. Um, for, for, for the lives of black uh, youth. And the quote that I really feel like exemplifies this, this kind of healing justice a framework is that today's events require new modes of organizing that are both inwardly focused on meaning making and healing from the wounds inflected from structural oppression, as well as outwardly focusing on social change. So to some, his important contributions were that he created a social justice youth development framework that he argued that youth activism created critical social capital, which resulted in a praxis, a critical civic praxis, and led to critical consciousness um, for youth development. He argued that PAR, and why PAR specifically with black young people, is the intersection of art, science, and imagination, and also argued for the inclusion of hip hop as a way to, uh, to address and, and work through youth culture. In some later works, he articulated how black youth activism is about healing justice instead of just social justice, and that emphasized and celebrated new modes of youth leadership that focus on hope, love, and healing that are restorative and redemptive. So in closing, Dr. Jinrai on his blog, which was just full of inspiration and hope um, and, and really well thought out words, um, shared that justice is more than the absence of oppression. And on a, a blog entry about his love um, love letter essentially to black boys, he says, there is a precious tenderness underneath the thin veneer of toughness of every black boy. We only need to open our hearts to see how much they are crying out for us to really see them, hold them, and love them. Dr. Jin Wright's contributions span beyond participatory action research into the lives and the intersections of race, culture, gender, identity, and help us understand how social justice youth development and youth organizing can restore hope in the black community. I came to slay, bitch. I like cornbread and dollar greens, bitch. Oh, yes, you best to believe it. Y'all hate us corny with that Illuminati mess. Paparazzi, catch my fly and my cocky fresh. I'm so reckless when I rock my Givenchy dress. I'm Thank so you. I'm so possessive, so I rock his rock necklaces.